I should say there have been incentives for solar energy research. The first one was just uh, basic research, the incentive of new discoveries, pushing back the frontiers of knowledge. The next incentive was the realization that our fossil fuels, coal, oil, and gas, won't last forever. We'll have to get substitutes sometime. The third incentive was the unequal distribution of wealth around the world. Wealthy nations are the ones which have uh, plenty of fuel. And another incentive is that we're realizing with these blackouts and brownouts that we're, we're going to run short of electric power. We've got all coal for perhaps two centuries, but uh, we're going to have difficulty getting a new electric power addition is fast enough. Uh, now we're finding out that uh, we have limited resources. We need to worry about the, the collateral damage of the use of this energy, namely the carbon emissions and also the other pollutants. And so we need a second industrial revolution where you can have both the energy that would supply this growing prosperity in the world, but in a clean form and in a sustainable way. The way that we've generated energy in the last hundred years from essentially a single point of fossil fuels is not sustainable. Either by the end of this century or clearly moving on, we need to have other strategies. What we're doing in the center is critical to this energy grand challenge because it's helping us diversify how we source energy for society. And we're evaluating the potential for how one specific part of the biofuels area, cellulosic biofuels, can contribute to that energy equation that society will need to live on. We've decided to take an approach that allows us to try and extract as much energy from a diverse set of crops and convert it into a small number of fuels and the sustainability of these technologies from the field through the pump will really be critical in getting consumer and society acceptance into the types of new fuels that we're gonna be generating. The thing that makes, I think, Madison historically great is the fact that when people get together across disciplines and try to f determine what is an emerging problem, it's independent of the disciplines that we try to pull together to try to attack something that's really important. Take the Solar Energy Lab. It was thought up essentially by Farrington Daniels in the chemistry department. He then connected with a professor in mechanical engineering and chemical engineering, formed a committee, started the laboratory, and we are one of the prime places historically since the late 50s in doing work in solar energy. Here with the Energy Institute, our major purpose is to try to look at ways to discover new methods, take those discoveries to some sort of process or product, and then essentially provide real-world solutions. The WEI will hopefully accomplish some of these goals in energy research because we founded it on the principle that at Madison we have been doing energy research for decades. But we felt it was important to try to pull it together and facilitate a lot of the work which is becoming more and more interdisciplinary. So the WI is founded on those three principles, research, education of our students, and the community and outreach to the community. We try to get top-notch people as faculty, try to involve the students and the scientists as best we can, and with those people they come up with imaginative ideas, and essentially then we try to provide the infrastructure to get it done. We were lucky enough to get the state to contribute a central facility for the Energy Institute, and that's the Wisconsin Energy Institute building. The focus of the building initially in phase one is really to put a lot of the pieces together that we already have on campus in renewables, primarily in biofuels. We have a large part of the building in an integrated energy systems approach where we have large uh, high bay areas that we can essentially put systems together and look at how these renewable energy systems uh, work together in terms of production of useful energy, storage of it, and then a proper power control and redistribution of the energy. So that's what the building is used for. It's a bringing together of a lot of opportunities in the future.